Hello everybody and welcome to this Grace Note video. Today I am so honored and pleased to be joined by one of my favorite people and also a coach of mine who is a very important and integral part of my life, Dr. Mark Howard. Hello Mark, welcome. Hi Grace, uh, hello everyone. Thank you so much, I'm really happy to be here today. I'm so pleased to have you on, Mark, because I know today that we are going to talk about keeping the holiday feeling all yes. year round. And um, before we get into that, I mean, I just want to share with those of you uh, who are listening that maybe don't know Dr. Mark, uh, a little bit about Dr. Mark before we get started. Well, firstly, he is, as I said, uh, an integral part of my life. And Mark and I have been having the most beautiful conversations together for the last, I would say, year perhaps. And in that time, I've really noticed such a shift in my own life and such a change in just really not taking myself as seriously and just relaxing into enjoying life. When I coach with Mark, I can sometimes show up in all sorts of thought storms and within 15 minutes, I find myself light and easy and joyful and just really laughing with Mark. Um, he definitely knows how to, how to move the feeling back to that good feeling and that powerful feeling. And for those of you that are familiar with the three principles, Mark was actually one of the earliest students of Sydney Banks. He was one of the first pioneers to bring the principles to the field of psychology. If you're wondering what we're talking about, I'm going to provide a link below where you can learn a little bit more about what those principles are. Yeah. But for, for those of you that are somewhat familiar with the principles, we are actually learning today and speaking today with someone who really has been there from the very beginning. And from what I understand, Dr. Mark, you today you have a very successful practice in San Francisco, uh, both offline and online. Do you want to share a little bit about the type of work that you do with people? Well, yes, you know, uh, I do have um, a practice here locally in the San Francisco Bay Area and have had that practice for uh, 38 years. Uh, not wanting to date myself too much, but <laughs> I've been offering this understanding actually for, for most of that time. And it's, it's really a practice to bring out uh, people's own inner wisdom to help, that w to help them solve their problems their way and to help people see that um, they can live beyond the, the difficulties they're now having, that that's really possible for people to do that. And so we just have convers I just have conversations with people and we talk in ways that begin to bring those realizations of this uh, inner wisdom to people's minds. Yeah, beautiful. And you yeah. know what I just, I absolutely love, and it's quite radical, but I want to kick off with this because I absolutely love that, you know, your mission statement is basically peace is possible right now. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of people listening today. It doesn't look that way to them. It looks like their bank account is the problem. Their relationship is the problem. Their weight is the problem. So can we start with, you know, hearing more about this holiday feeling and how peace is possible to us right now? Well, I love um, this idea that... Um, about the holiday spirit. I think it was early on in my being a student of this teacher, Sidney Banks, that I listened to him and he mentioned something along the lines of, um, it was during this period of the year, the holiday time of the year, you know, and he just kind of offhandedly said, you know, uh, you can have this holiday feeling all year round. And that hit me because I didn't live like that, you know, <laughs> around the, the holiday time of the year. I, I somehow became generous and thankful because here in the United States, we start with a, a Thanksgiving. That's kind of that tradition in the United States and North America, really, Canada celebrates it too. So starting from the late November, we're, we move right into this holiday kind of feeling, you know? Yeah. And so I was 
so that's gratitude and then uh, compassion for others and being generous and loving. And um, it seems to me, as I heard Sydney Banks share that, I all of a sudden woke up to, hey, I just reserve time to spend deeply in those feelings for only a certain part of the year. And um, I started to look at that. And I, I realized that... Um, we have these feelings all the time. They're our true nature. Love is our true nature. And then manifestations of love, generosity, compassion, forgiveness, uh, gratitude, uh, are, are, are true spiritual energy. And, um, and I saw that, that it's possible for all of us, no matter what our circumstances are, uh, to live in those feelings and use those feelings to guide our lives to solution. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then as I noticed that uh, I noticed, uh, you know, looked at that for myself, I noticed that the only thing getting in the way was I didn't think we did. Mm -hmm. uh, I started to, you know, get back in, you know, after this holiday season, I get back into my habitual thinking. I get serious about life. And, and so that, that thinking uh, uh, affected the way I looked at the, the life circumstances I have, whether it was um, a low bank account or a, a, a job difficulty. And that helped me, uh, that understanding helped me uh, begin to manifest these feelings more year round. Beautiful. Yeah. And you know, and Mark, one of the number one questions I get asked from, from my client base in particular is, you know, well, how, how do I get to that feeling when, you know, I'm still stuck in this corporate job or I still don't have the money that I want or I'm not going to be able to make rent next month? What have you got to say a little bit more deeply to us about, you know, when, when, our, when our circumstances look real and start to overwhelm us? Well, first of all, um, I think, uh, like me, when we begin to say, how do we get to those feelings? I don't particularly have them when I look out at my corporate job. Mm -hmm. um, again, you see, that's, um, that's a misunderstanding because you are those feelings. So if you are those feelings, what's in the way? And really, what's in the way, honestly, is just the way you're using this beautiful gift to think about life. Uh, and you're thinking about life in a way that produces discouragement or dissatisfaction or worry. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is a simple way to look at it is like when I had a job in a medical center and, um, and uh, it would surprise me that one day I would go into the job and I would be so dissatisfied. I would start looking at um, a, 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 a want ads for other jobs. The next day I would go in and I felt like I loved my job. And mm. I couldn't make sense of that until I realized the reason I felt so differently at various times about just my job was the way I was thinking about it. Mm -hmm. And it isn't uh, an idea that you... Uh, grasp that you think about it and then you want to change your thinking. It's really understanding that the only thing in the way of you having the wisdom to know how to handle these life circumstances and the feelings you're looking for is really gaining a, a, an understanding that it's just the way you're, you're looking at it. It's just the way you're thinking about these situations. Yeah. Not that they're not real, not that they're not real, but your thinking is moving you into a, a state where you don't have, you're pretty limited in the, in this capacity we are as human beings to really take care of ourselves in those situations. Yeah. Beautiful. And that was going to be one of my next questions, you know, that, that really comes uh, again from our audience is like, how is it different what you're describing and how, and how beautifully you're uh, putting it across, how is this different to just changing our thinking with, let's say, a positive psychology? Because a lot of our listeners don't really, 
you know, they come in and they think that it's just about changing their thinking. But we're talking about something very different here. So could you go a little bit further on what's the difference between what you're sharing versus this, oh, I'll just think more positively? Um, well, it really relies on the fact that all of us as living beings have a capacity to learn through realizing, through insight around already inborn knowledge uh, around life and our true nature and wisdom. Mm -hmm. And it takes a realization to uh, bring that to mind for each one of us. If we're, you can see that it's kind of fools us if we're trying to work at our thinking to change it, you have to see that you're still thinking you've got a problem. Yeah. You see, mm -hmm. it, it, it's kind of subtle. So working on your thinking and changing your thinking doesn't work mm -hmm. uh, long term, really. I mean, people have found uh, peace of mind and relief by, you know, doing exercises with their thinking, but you got to see that you're still in a, in a idea that you've got difficulties in your life. So you really have, you really can find a um, level of understanding the true nature of thought where you just recognize that it is just thought. It's just the way that you're looking at life and it gives you a chance to find uh, wiser ways to look at yeah. it. That's, That's so huge. Here. Yeah. I mean, I recall in my own experience, you know, Mark, I think it was three years ago where I really had gotten into this exploration more deeply and find myself on retreat. And I remember when I walked into the room, the first thing that was on my mind was how do I measure up? How do I compare to these people? And oh my God, is the teacher going to ask me a question and I'm going to get it wrong? And I literally, I could not relax. And for the first time in my life, I noticed that I couldn't relax. I, I, mm -hmm. felt, it, I felt my grace holding grace very tightly. Mm -hmm. and, um, and really what I saw, like as you're describing, was I saw that I was living serious. You know, I was lost in, a, in that insecure thinking but that thinking had looked so real to me for so long that, that that manifestation of seriousness and uptightness and how do I compare just had me living life in a very ungraceful way. Yeah. You know, and so in really seeing that, and I was someone who came from let's just do the exercises to change our thinking, but ultimately would return back to the feeling of seriousness and, and sort of self-consciousness. But when I really saw what you're describing here, when I really saw the power of thought and, and that it didn't, you know, that, that it was fueling the feeling, you know, that it was fueling my, my experience, all, all of that changed. And I was amazed at how simply life became, how simple life became and how easily it could change without the need to be vigilant about my thinking. Mm -hmm. So for a lot of people listening, and I'd love to hear your story too. I'd love the listeners mm -hmm. to hear your, your experience of insight for the first time. But for those listening who maybe they really do feel they need to do something in order for a shift to happen. They need to do those mental exercises or they need to be constantly praying to God, you know, in a sort of, I'm not talking in a gratitude sense, I'm talking in a desperation sense. What, what would you say to them? Well, I love your, first of all, I love what you shared because uh, as pe people hear 
who are listening to us, that's the sense of what we're pointing to, that something can occur to you that shows you how things work uh, psychologically and emotionally beyond techniques. Yeah. Uh, because, uh, and once they do, you're living with another understanding that will begin to help you um, handle your life situations in a way that's really true for you and right for you. Um, um, but what were you asking? I forgot. I'm sorry. That's <laughs> okay. I mean, I suppose, well, I do want to hear your experience of insight uh -huh. by back. And before we go there, I just wanted you to, to sort of speak to those people who feel that they have to mentally effort their way to change. Well, I don't think you can do it. You know, I really don't think you do it. When I'm bothered uh, with my wife, mm -hmm. I don't think about uh, thinking, making effort to feel love for her. I just, you know, that, that's the power of thought. You know, once you're in an experience of life, which could be called bother or seriousness or joy, that's all created from us through thought. It's, it's our it's where our emotions come from but once you're in it like grace you were saying it's so real you're not thinking oh let me practice love love to her you're bothered you know <laughs> uh, but what happens as i've seen over the years for me and all of my clients and all of the people i've met who are looking to understand the true nature and knowledge that we hold within us is that all you just need is a little simple realization that oh, wait a minute here maybe my thinking has something to do with this that starts to shift you where when i when me when i am bothered now uh it occurs to me oh my god uh my thinking's off it just comes up see rather than having to remember techniques and have an index card on the refrigerator that says, when you're bothered by your wife, do this, you know? Mm -hmm. Instead of that, it occurs naturally to me what's going on, the truth of what's going on. Yeah. And then that, that, that then gives me ways to, that, that gives me my ways to change, which would be, you know, Mark, quiet down, take a moment, um, apologize. But just like my client the other day who, has been struggling because he really wanted techniques, really wanted techniques. And all of a sudden in the session, he said, I finally got what you were saying. He says, I just realized I think too much about myself. I, every thought that comes up about myself, I think about it. And then I, I feel the consequences of that. And I, now the, from what I just realized, I realize I don't have to think every thought that comes to my mind. So, from an insight, he had this little insight. Oh, I think too much about myself. That's what's wrong. Mm -hmm. Now, from there, he got his technique. He got his own way, which is, I'm not going to think every thought, of, every thought about me that comes to mind. Yeah. You see? Yeah. I could have given him that technique, and it, he could have never been able to use it. Right. And I love that, you know, because we, we talk a lot in our community about, you know, living from wisdom. Yeah. But it's, it's your own wisdom. It's not your coach's wisdom or your teacher's wisdom or your partner's wisdom. It's, it's your own wisdom that comes to you from that place. So tell us a little bit, Mark, about your story in relation to actually coming across this, you know, um, I know we're talking about the feeling of the holiday spirit, but like, tell us about how you came to that realization. Uh, you mentioned earlier that it was something that uh, your mentor, Sydney Banks, said. But what was life like before that experience, and how did things shift uh, through your own insight? I want to. I just want to piggyback uh, around this uh, feeling of the holiday spirit, and you're sharing about wisdom coming yeah. from us that that feeling is where wisdom lies so mm -hmm. when you have that feeling you don't have to worry wisdom will is there that's the feeling that uh, that wisdom manifests from yeah. uh, but my own story was you know i was um, i was raised uh, in um uh in in the united states in um 
the in the 1950s as a, a boy. And so, um, you know, I, I uh, was taught how to be a man, you know, like uh, stand up for yourself and, uh, you know, I don't know, whatever. And, uh, and then I played athletics, which was like, you know, really be aggressive. And so I just kind of developed through my life in a, as a young adult um, uh, with a lot of righteousness. You know, I would debate people. I would argue a lot. I wouldn't get physically angry, but I would get angry. And, um, and even though I had a nice marriage with my wife, I would find myself arguing a lot or, uh, not, uh, or, or uh, debating her. And so one day I woke up and I just realized I don't want to do this anymore. And I reached out to a few people that had helped me in my uh, career and life. And they had just heard of this man, Sidney Banks, and he was in town with a seminar. So I went to it on a Thursday evening and I had an insight listening to him. And uh, again, you know, when we talk about wisdom coming to us via an insight or realization, we, uh, it, it comes like uh, in a feeling, you just get, if you really looked at before you really saw anything, there was this beautiful feeling and then it, what I saw was all these emotions uh, that I was dealing with were just made up. They didn't have a life of their own. There was nothing to them. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't have to make anything about them. Um, they were just made up because of the way I thought. I just saw that. And I couldn't understand it. Like, I didn't know what to do with that. Um, and then the next moment I saw, man, if I could live with this understanding, I would be happy. And so would my clients. And, uh, but it really shifted me. Just that really changed me. And I started to notice in my life, just with that, not with the ongoing learning that I that it, my, dedicated myself to do mm -hmm. uh, after that. But just with that, I started to just see, like I was sharing with you, um, just in terms of getting home that evening that I started to see, you know, I would get into what I call now bother. And I realized, wait a minute, that's just made up. It just came to me. That's just made up. And I settled myself down and I didn't go forward with what I used to do. And it changes the whole way I practice my work with people. Uh, like I share a lot in some of the webinars and so forth. When I went back to the clinic to see people that day, I had, seven hours of people to see. Uh, I, I couldn't do what I used to do. I couldn't practice with giving them techniques. I couldn't give yeah. them strategies because if they could just see what I saw, if they could just get a little, uh, a, 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 you know, a little understanding of, of this here, this understanding of, of what I saw in that moment, they'd be fine. So we just started to have conversations about that. We would just talked together about, what do you think about this? <laughs> really, it was yeah. just that easy and simple. And people would say, well, it makes sense. And uh, what, else have, what else could you say about it? And I had nothing else. I said, well, that, I don't have anything more, but let's just keep talking, you know? Yeah. And uh, it grew from there. Thank but you. it was a powerful shift. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk more about the holiday spirit and, and keeping that alive all year round. You know, um, it's an interesting one because this is the time of year where people are either going back to their families or they're experiencing perhaps some stress around all the gifts they have to purchase or, you know, all the sort of demands that yeah. are upon them. For, for, for a lot of people, Christmas is not a graceful, joyful experience. <laughs> So um, I'd really love if you could speak a bit more to, uh, to, to how it can be and what this, what this, you know, what more about this holiday spirit all year round, Mark? Well, I think we're, we're looking at um, how can you live from uh, the true spiritual energy you are, love and understanding. How can you live in a way where it comes to your mind to have compassion or generosity or be thankful um, and not ignore that you have some difficulties to face. But it's kind of like, where would you like to look at it from? You know, where would you like to go into these 
kinds of holiday situations from yourself? Would you like to go into them from your usual ways of uh, thinking about them, either dissatisfied or worried or frightened or uh, angry or uh, righteous? Or would you like to go into them with the potential to have understanding and, and love in your heart? Really, that's really the question. Um, and the other is, if you went that way, you want to see, you really want to live, that other people have it too. Everybody that you go to, to see through this time of the year, or any time of the year, but particularly because we're talking about this time of year, you go to family, they have that in them too. They are the same as you. They are this spiritual energy we're calling love and understanding of the holiday feeling. And the only reason they're not expressing it is because like us, they're caught up in some insecure thinking. Yeah, really, they are. They're really stressed. They're exhausted. They're worried. They're thinking badly of themselves. They're serious. You know, that's the only reason you're not seeing them. And again, you know, when it comes into family, everybody's got their habitual thoughts of one another. So you add that to the picture too. Yeah. But if you see that, that takes care of you. Yeah. If you see that they have within them, they are the holiday spirit already. And the only thing in you're not seeing that from them is they're caught up innocently. Right. They don't know this in their own painful thinking. Yeah. If you can see that that takes care of you. Yeah. It allows you to not get judgmental. Yes. That's been huge in, in my own relationships with people is, you know, in the past before I came across this, it just used to take everything so personally you know, and I think a lot of our female listeners will connect with when you see someone in that experience, you, I think, especially the healers and teachers and coaches amongst us, it's almost like we want to fix their experience. We want them to feel better. But at the same time, we take it so personally, oh, it's about us. So when I really saw, and I think it was through one of our conversations, Mark, our coaching conversations, when I really saw that actually that their experience had nothing to do with me <laughs> and everything to do with the level of thinking they were in. Um, life, again, became more graceful, relationships easier, and, and where things would have become argumentative and maybe created anything but a holiday spirit, mm -hmm. they were now moving on swiftly, you know? Mm -hmm. So I love that. I love that peace is possible right now. You know, I love that um, yes. that that experience, that holiday spirit is possible right now and all yes. year round. Yeah. Is there anything you'd like to finish with, Mark? Anything that you would like our listeners to just um, keep in mind as they go across this holiday season and into 2019? I think you just said it, that it's wonderful that peace is possible right now. Uh, the, these feelings are possible right now. And, uh, you know, and uh, just if you get out there on the road and you get caught up, just bring yourself back. Bring yourself back to the feeling. It'll yeah. take care of you. Love it. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Oh, so thank you, Grace. <laughs> For those of you listening, um, Mark and I will be uh, joining together alongside a lovely colleague of ours, uh, Monica Fava, up in Tuscany in June. So we are going to host a retreat. If, you're, if you like what you've heard today and you would like to go a bit deeper and have some information about that retreat, please reach out to me on gracefulcoaching at gmail.com. And uh, we will send you the information that you need. We'd love to hear from you. And also, we'd just like to share that um, if there's something that you've heard that has really stood out for you, leave us a comment below. So you can comment here below. Leave us a comment and let us know what your big takeaway is. Because Mark and I would love to hear from you. And I'm sure we, yes. can, um, we can converse from there. So thanks for being here, everybody. And I hope that this has been a lovely holiday gift for you all. 
uh, Mark, you and I will be in touch in a couple of weeks' time. Yes. And in, in the meantime, uh, have a lovely Christmas. Thank you. Nice being with everyone. Have a wonderful Christmas. Ciao.